Good morning. You guys hear me okay? Fantastic. So I hope you guys are all excited to join me on our 35-year uh, retrospective of the impact of this amazing album on the uh, rock scene. Uh, but actually, we're going to be talking about web workers. Hi, I am Potch, uh, Matt Clay Potch, if you're my mom, uh, Potch if you're on the internet, or my coworkers. Uh, I work at Mozilla, and uh, we uh, make Firefox, if you've heard of that. But we also do a lot of other things. And I'm on the apps engineering team at Mozilla. And what we do is we actually are uh, a group of web devs whose job is to try to solve common pain points elsewhere on the web for people who are trying to build web applications. Um, and a big problem we're running into these days is that uh, the web is single-threaded, meaning everything is happening in the UI thread, and you get a lot of jank. Uh, you get a lot of this. Uh, if you do this, what do you think is going to happen? This. Uh, so jank is the enemy. Uh, we, Chrome does not present this dialogue because Chrome uh, has multi-process UI, but you can still make scrolling performance awful, and you can still make the smoothness of your page go straight to heck by doing too much on the same piece of code that is also drawing to your screen. So right now we're getting a lot of congestion on the web because we have scroll operations, we have a lot of uh, request and parsing of JSON, we have loading of resources, and we have all the important bits, which is drawing the UI to the user, all happening in the same place. But what if we could have something a little more like this? Smooth pandas rolling in parallel, it would be beautiful. Uh, and actually, it turns out that uh, in you know, most other programming paradigms, we have something called threads. Uh, those of you who are so familiar with this, bear with me. Uh, threads are essentially just parallel pieces of execution. Uh, they are all part of the same process. Uh, you can also start up multi-process stuff. But threads are how we get stuff done, uh, and parallel computing is all the rage these days. How does the web have parallel computing? Yes, it does, thanks to this. Uh, this is a uh, relatively, well, you know, I think if, if you're familiar with IE8, you should be familiar with web workers. Uh, it's about, it hails from that era. Uh, workers are a technology by which you can load a script that runs in a separate thread and communicate with it uh, asynchronously throughout the life of the document. Uh, yeah, they're not that new. Um, they've been around for a while, and actually, as you can see, as of really recently, they're available everywhere. Um, there actually are some polyfills, but they're not particularly reliable. But yeah, if you're developing for uh, relatively recent browsers, or actually if you're developing for uh, mobile, I think you can actually get a lot of use out of web workers. So I'm going to go through a, a really, really simple test case, uh, and uh, we're going to go through that. So yeah, the uh, web workers were created and actually standardized fully. They're a candidate recommendation as of uh, May 1st, 2012. So uh, if you're worried about the spec moving around, have no fear, because the spec is completely stable and everyone has agreed upon it to the extent that that is ever possible. Web workers have a few limitations. Because they're not connected to the main UI thread uh, for you know, safety and performance reasons, there are a couple limitations. One, uh, there is no window object. There is, there is no navigator object. There are very, very few things that you can access that have any relation to what the user sees on the screen. Uh, also, there is absolutely zero DOM manipulation. You cannot create elements. You cannot modify their properties. You cannot query things that are visual in nature, and you can, even if they're not being drawn to the screen. Um, for a bunch of people who like to use jQuery to build UI, you might think that this means that web workers are more or less a useless technology. But that's not, not so. You can get a lot done with the couple simple things that are available in that side thread. The first one is post message. Uh, if you've ever used iframe programming, you're really familiar with post message. Uh, post message lets you send a object uh, to another process, another page, uh, via just sending it off, uh, and then you, you wait for a message to come back. And here's what that looks like in web workers. We're going to create a uh, brand new worker, and a path is just the path to the uh, JS file that's going to run in your worker. And then you can send data to it by posting message. And then you can actually listen for requests to come back uh, by just listening for a message event to come in on that thing. And then anything you post message becomes the data property of the event. 
What that looks like on the worker, this is where things get a little bit stranger, but uh, in the worker, uh, all the uh, main built-in methods are exposed as globals. There's not a whole lot of namespacing. So you actually could just say on message, and you get the reference to the uh, thing, reference to the event. And if you want to be a little bit better of a citizen, you can say add event listener and then message. And this way you can pick up a couple messages throughout your app. And then you, just the same as you could post messages to the worker, you can post them right back. So I actually have, oh, not quite yet. Uh, the other thing that's available in workers is the uh, XML HTTP request object. This is really excellent because this means you can go and fetch data and deal with your data, such as parsing JSON, uh, possibly even doing some filtering, rendering of templates. You can do all this stuff in the worker and not have to do it on the main thread. So uh, this is really, really excellent stuff. All your AJAX is there. There's one other function that really doesn't have an equivalent uh, elsewhere, and that's called import scripts. Import scripts was designed to sort of solve the problem that you would solve with script tags on a normal web page. On a normal web page, you can say script source equals, script source equals, and you can pull these scripts in from all over the web. Uh, because we have no DOM, there's no easy way to load scripts into a worker except import scripts. Import scripts takes a list of URLs and actually goes out and fetches those URLs and executes that script in place. One of the really interesting things about import scripts is that it is synchronous, meaning the world will stop until every single one of those URLs is retrieved and all of that JavaScript is parsed and executed. Uh, this sounds like it could be bad, except for the fact that we're running off the main thread. So it doesn't really worry if we're blocking, because if we're blocking, it's fine. The UI thread is going to tick on as normal and just wait for the first post message. Here is a little demo. Uh, it's very, very beautiful. Uh, and it's a very, very simple markdown editor. Uh, uses GitHub flavored markdown. So we're just going to do a. And what's happening right now is that the left side is actually being sent up as markdown to a web worker. That web worker has the marked library installed on it, and, that, and it is parsing that markdown and converting it to an HTML string and sending it back via post message where it's being drawn on the right sides. And it works really nice. And you can take really, really large documents and really, really easily um, render them without blocking the main thread. So how is this going to work? Let's go under the hood a little bit of this demo. Uh, the main thing you actually see in JavaScript land is this piece of code. Uh, we're actually waiting for key down on their text areas. And then once we have that key, we're going to grab everything from the text area, and we're going to post it off to our worker. Our worker, and then we're going to wait for a response from our worker. If we get a message back from the worker, we know it's um, HTML. You can make workers that send all kinds of messages. Mine's very simple. Any message that comes from this worker has the rendered markdown in it. And we're going to take that rendered markdown, and we're going to put it right into the inner HTML of our page. Now, what does the worker look like? Worker is actually also really, really simple. We import our marked script, which we picked up off the internet, and then we just wait for a message to come in. And if that message comes in, we can just process it and then post it right back. This is really, really excellent. We don't even have to worry about all the contortions that you would go through with asynchronous programming. We can just take our time, do it in a synchronous manner, block if we want to, spin the CPU up a little if we need to. The UI is going to remain completely responsive while we're doing this. And this is really, really excellent. Neat. I mentioned that import scripts were synchronous. Uh, this is sort of a really interesting thing because it lets us say, hey, import scripts would be great for fetching random URLs off the web, but what if it worked more like require? What if we had the ability to take modules of code from our favorite repository, NPM? Oh, sorry, sorry, one second. Um, NPM. Yeah, um, and then we can take those NPM modules and take them and just run them in workers. Sure, we're not going to have access to the file system, but maybe we can stub some of that stuff out. So that's what I'm going to show now. First, we're going to import this little magical piece of code called commonjs.js. I'm actually going to very quickly show off that piece of code. I hope you guys can see that OK. The glory of low resolution is that the, tech, the code is readable. Um, and the main piece of meat here is this function called require. We're going to uh, sort of take our state of the world, because everything happens in a global scope, 
and freeze it. And then we're going to figure out whether we're requesting a regular script from the internet or whether we are dealing with a node path. And if we are, we're going to go look into our node modules directory, and then we're going to grab that file. So you can see we create a module and an exports object that are just to catch anything that's registered by the node object. And then once that's done, you know, your, mode, your node object will do something like this. And you can see we have exports.markdown equals marked s. So that means that when the worker, oh, my apology, when this runs, at the end, we're going to have a bunch of stuff that's either attached to module.exports or the exports object. And all we have to do is go through each thing and just return that back as the response to require. This is a huge and crazy hack. But the beautiful thing about all the best web technologies is that they're built around what I call the central hack. Um, you know, web applications are able to do things without reloading the page because someone figured out the central hack of using Microsoft's ActiveX XML HTTP request object to fetch arbitrary blobs of data from the internet. That's awesome. At first, everyone looks at that and says, that's a terrible thing that is a war crime, but it's not. It's the central hack that makes that possible. Um, a lot of different technologies, especially some of your favorite polyfills, are actually taking advantage of that central hack that makes it possible and then putting really nice, elegant designs on top. So we return require back to our users, or back to our worker, and then we can just use it. So let's go back to the demo. Now, communicating between the two different processes, it can be really, really, really troublesome just because post message can be hard to maintain. Um, and we, we, what we want is this nice, encapsulated way to send a message and wait for a response to our message. So I wrote this little piece of code called a promise worker. And what this does is it's based on the notion that a promise is really just an asynchronous piece of code. We don't know what's happening underneath the hood. Normally that function is running right inside of the promise. However, what if we just ran that code out on the worker? So what this lets us do is actually take a node module and expose its API over the web worker interface and back to our main thread. So this is actually what's happening now on the client side of this code. And this is actually the code from the demo. We're waiting for a key. We are calling our API, and we're calling the markdown function on it. And we're sending the value of our input. And then we're going to just wait for that promise to be resolved and take that rendered markup and put it right back into the page. Looks something like this. We call markdown on the promise worker. The promise worker sends a post message out to the worker and then sends a promise back to the request. The worker goes and does its thing and then calls back to the promise and says, hey, I'm finished. We look up which promise this request is being responded to, and then we call the then method and resolve it. The messages we're using look a little, bit some, a little something like this. We make an RPC message out to the worker, and we say we want to call this method with these arguments, and here's the call ID. Every time we make a call, we increment the call ID so we know which method we're calling and which response we're receiving. The response comes back with that call ID, and that way we know which promise to resolve. So we use the marked library, and then we are exporting a bunch of stuff to it. We're exporting markdown, we're exporting jort sort. And then what happens is we take that piece of code that's been, or that module that's been exported, and we iterate over it, and we actually send back to the client a list of methods that are available. Markdown and jort sort, in this case, are available. Let's take a look at that piece of code. Our promise worker looks really, really simple. We are fetching a worker with the URL of our script, and then we are waiting to receive our RPC register call. When we do that, we call register RPC on each individual method, and then we attach a handler to our AP, an API object. That API object is actually what's exposed back to the client side. Meaning, well, all we have to do now is, pardon? All we have to do now is catch that API object, and we can call methods on it. Those methods are now going to return a promise to us, post a message to the server, or post a message to the worker, sorry, and then wait for the reply to come back. 
The next thing I'm going to talk about is sort of an extrapolation of what we've been talking about. What, workers are great, but we can take that stuff and make it even more useful. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the future. Service workers. Service workers are an upcoming standard uh, that's being worked on uh, by Alex Russell at Google and a bunch of other people. And it allows us to create a piece of middleware that actually connects your server down to your client. And that means that even when your server goes away, even when clients, or when clients make requests, this piece of middleware actually catches the request and figures out what to do with it. So it looks a little bit something like this. We can register a URL of a worker. And when that worker receives a request, we can actually figure out what we've requested, and we can do a bunch of processing in the worker to determine what to do. In this case, we're querying an API, and then we create a response object that responds back to the main page. And we're responding with a content type header and a status. This is really, really powerful. So um, I think workers are a really excellent technology. Um, I hope you can work, work a couple workers into your life. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Are there any? Uh, I know. I know there. If you have any questions about using web workers, I know that went by much faster than I anticipated. Um, I think you can just call questions out, or we can run a mic, and then we can. Uh, I can respond to them right here. First question. Any questions? One brief exhalation of air. <laughs> there we go. Cool. Have you done any work with um, shared workers? I know we're becoming a thing. Shared workers are becoming a thing. I, I didn't get a chance to talk about those uh, simply because I, I, they really haven't gotten a chance to land in any places that are usable yet. But shared workers essentially are very similar to service workers in that they let you create um, a thread, but as opposed to it being tied to one specific page, uh, every page that's open in the user's browser can actually communicate via that. So you can post message to the shared worker and then post message back to a different uh, running instance of the page. Uh, I haven't actually got a chance to play with those, but they're, they're really, really powerful. Um, and I actually think the best part about shared workers is they're going to really let us uh, polyfill service workers um, in the places where they're available, and we don't have to necessarily worry about waiting for that implementation to land. Um, actually, uh, there's a couple other things that are uh, coming up uh, in workers that I'm really excited about. Specifically, um, we're going to have access to uh, the uh, IndexedDB stack. So uh, if you're not familiar with IndexedDB, um, it's going to let it lets you, it's a key value store built into the browser that lets you really, really simply store stuff asynchronously. And because it's asynchronous, it's actually not connected to the main thread, meaning we can call it from a worker and actually go fetch data and cache it all without having to have it touch the main thread. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty psyched about that. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned that the uh, polyfills are bad. How bad are they? Is there any hope for, say, IE9, 10? Um, yeah, so the, the uh, polyfills really rely on uh, iframes to get a lot done. Uh, so you end up using uh, an iframe with a script file in it, and then you're post messaging to the script file. Um, and actually, they work OK. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily rely on them too much on mobile. But the, uh, I think for IE9, I wouldn't worry about uh, the stability stuff. I think they work pretty well. Uh, the last time I read the lists uh, concerning workers, there was discussion around bringing like document fragments uh, in DOM nodes. I was wondering if that went anywhere, if it was officially shut down or anything like that. Uh, I haven't heard any updates on that. Um, I would love to see that. Uh, yeah. the, what I'm actually really excited about playing with next is um, taking React, uh, because it doesn't really have any sense of the DOM intrinsic to it, and we actually already have React stuff that runs in Node. We should really, really easily be able to um, instantiate React over in a worker and then do all of our DOM manipulation and then just push the final rendered markup over. And it, I think it's going to be pretty nice. But um, I, I would love to have document fragments. I don't see any reason they couldn't be there. Any questions? If you have any other questions you can think of, just uh, you can come and find me also after the talk. So. Uh, all right. Well. Uh, give it up once more for Potch. Thanks.